Outward is a game developed by Nine Dot Studios, consisting of only 10 people. What the studio has done should be praised as Outward has an incredibly interesting world and sets the player up for an adventure with seemingly endless options on how to approach each encounter. The game offers a plethora of classes that can all be mixed and matched. Want to be a paladin who dons heavy armor and smashes his enemies with an oversized great hammer while buffing themselves with holy magic? Or a crazed rogue engineer who fights battles in his terms and can reduce the enemy to a smoldering heap with well placed traps and tripwires? You could even be a runic mage that relies on ranged magic as well as an old style flintlock pistol with infused bullets. The build variety this game offers, as well as the world it sets up and throws you into as a simple bystander, can be daunting. However, as long as you prepare well, use your head, most situations can be overcome despite your weapons or build. This is where it truly shines in my opinion. In its character builds, player choice, its interesting worlds and environments, and its environmental storytelling. But once you begin playing the game, the facade slips and cracks, and the small petty grievances grow in size until what was once exciting and intense becomes tedious and annoying. However, despite my issues with the game, I can still sing its praises as an incredibly ambitious rough game that ends up struggling under its own weight. Graphically, I were wouldn't look at a place coming of early access in 2012. The best thing I can say about the general look of the game is that it is average to just below average. That doesn't mean, however, that I would can't inspire all from the player. Some sites and art assets are really creative and unique, with some areas having better ideas than others. The real standouts in the game for me would have to be the Hallowed Marsh, with its press of atmosphere and its beacon of hope being the Holy City, which is surrounded by giant response, and the Abyssal Desert, which houses the city of Lavath, with its harsh sun and heat reading off the ground, it really gives the atmosphere of an intense desert area. But this is even matching the dungeons, which almost all look great with good map design and some interesting puzzles, which encourage exploration. For example, Stone Titan Caves allows the player to use the large sculpture of weapons to traverse the dungeon, and it gives a great sense of skill to the area. But on the other hand, places like Face of the Ancients are let down, a handful of enemies and a palette swap monster with no real detail or current put into the environment, and these polar opposites really run through the very core of the game. Enemy models range from average to great with some really eye-catching and unique designs. Unfortunately, the game doesn't do any of the bosses justice. Many of the bosses are just palette swaps of enemies that already exist in the game, a few of which have no unique attacks at all. When I played through the game with a friend, we didn't even know we encountered the boss known as the first cannibal until we looked it up later. To us it was just a blue wendigo that we baited into two other enemies so they could fight. Performance wise the game runs mostly fine with some odd exceptions, I can't really give proper insight here. And all I can really say is, when I wasn't recording my PC managed to maintain a steady frame rate on medium to high, with certain options turned off. When I was recording however I did notice some frame rate hitches, and again, especially around the more dense, pe densely packed areas. Once you venture out from the starting city, you will be quickly introduced to the combat. At its heart, it's a simple combat system with stamina management, rolling, blocking, guard breaking, light attacks and special attacks. Something you'll quickly notice is that any damage taken or stamina used will eventually be permanently burnt until you rest or use a consumable item. This encourages you to pick your battles once again reinforcing the idea of using your head. Pick fights, trick enemies, lure them away and fight carefully. It is after this, however, when the combat falls to the first hurdle. The weapons both you and your enemies use feel like there's no weight behind them. Clunky rules, weird weapon hitboxes, magic hitting through walls, ask 9 skill wind at times and cooldowns, block input drops, the near useless knockdowns of the game's weapons, and the biggest defender of the combat system, the fact that every enemy in the game has an infinite resource pool. Why program good AI we can ice mage it spams magic constantly without any drawbacks, but through it for other enemies spam heavy attacks? Most humanoid fights boil down to you circling their back while they spam attacks recklessly. Fights against non humanoids get even worse, as these non stop spam attacks can end up stun locking you to death. Skills are meant to even the playing field, and some skills certainly do, but when looking at what works on outward and what doesn't work, suddenly the endless pool of options you had becomes so limited. Because you realise that when you're playing a straight up melee build, you have to go with what works, or else you just keep getting killed. These flaws combined with the fact that any skills you use and any damage taken deep off your character means that you quickly tire of the combat system, as it becomes tedious and samey. The gameplay never really changes or feels generally great or challenging to me as the combat was just easy to cheese with luring enemies into each other or just buff stacking and killing the, one of the biggest bosses in the game in a few hits. The combat is usually annoying or plain underwhelming. It's very rarely interesting to fight anything, even with this many classes and skills the game gives you. The setup of Outward's world is great, and when you walk into the for the first time it can truly inspire all our terror. But it only takes a few journeys to realise there's nothing in the game that can actually run you, save for a few enemies. Meaning you can run away the vast majority of the time and face no consequences. The roads also all feel completely empty, yes there are miscellaneous dungeons and enemies, 
but compared to the vast swaths of nothingness, they pale in comparison. Factions suffer as well, with only 3 factions in the main game, and they only have around 4 missions each. It's just nowhere near enough to keep the player truly invested for very long. Outward is strange to me. For as much as I dislike the combat and the emptiness of the game, I really enjoyed my 26 hour playthrough. This is primarily down to the fact however that I played through the entire game with a friend. Suddenly a lot of the issues that I had with the game suddenly disappeared, and we could face dungeons and tough foes together. Exploring the world with a friend and discovering new items and places this round, and the devs have to be commended for making a game that is fully playable in split screen and online in 2020. It's a shame that I can't give the game a pass on this alone, as even the co-op suffers issues. The main issue with the co-op is that you do not truly progress for your friend. Yes, you can pick up loot, but any credit rewards will be automatically given to the host. Now these could be extremely powerful passive buffs that can only drop once in the world, or there'll be quest items that similarly only drop once in the world. So what does the game really want us to do? Jump into our own world and progress at the same point again just to get the rewards we earned? I ask this question because I don't understand why giving the other player the rewards but keeping the chest and enemy drop pills the same would interfere with the vision of the game. Outward does a lot of things, but never does anything to a high degree. Despite all these rough edges, I could easily recommend the game for $13.99, as that's what I paid for when I was on sale. But the game actually costs $34.99, which for what you get in my opinion just isn't enough, and it's sad to me that when I think of it, so many bad experiences jump to mind. And there may have been good ones, I'm forgetting. But with how bad or undercooked ideas led to the game, I just can't recommend the game at full price. I don't really like giving scores, but if I was forced, I'd say this game is about a 6.5 out of 10. But don't take that as a write-off. This is part of the reason I don't like giving numerical scores. 6.5 may sound low, but the game is definitely above average. If you have a friend and the game is on sale, and you can see through the flaws, you see the game for what it is, a beautiful rough gem. It's a shame that the negatives end up making it feel like such an empty shell of a world.